one of the main words on people's lips at the moment is self-isolation. There's a whole bundle of other new terms that we're using all the time, but that's a key one. And that's what the disciples were doing on the Sunday that Jesus is resurrected. It's, it's Sunday afternoon, late in the afternoon, and they have barred the doors. They're locked in there. They're timid. They're fearful. They're arguing with each other. And things aren't good in this self-isolating house that's going on. And at the moment, that's a pretty contemporary picture um, that could be in many uh, houses around the world at the moment. So the death of Jesus really was a very heavy hit for the disciples. And they were not getting that this is part of the Father's plan, that this is part of his unfolding plan uh, that was perfectly being rolled out, just like with uh, the death of Lazarus when Mary and Martha sent word to uh, Jesus, come, you're, the one you love is ill, and Jesus stays two days and because he follows the Father's plan. And we had a look at that last week. And here's Jesus following the Father's plan, but the disciples still hadn't got it, even though so many times Jesus had told them exactly what was going to happen, but they, were, they failed to understand or comprehend what he was trying to tell them or warn them about what lay before him. Uh, and that's part of uh, the blindness that they had prior to the, the resurrection. So here they are in self-isolation, living out of fear. And this wasn't a prayer vigil. They went like this wasn't a deeply spiritual exercise where they're like having a spiritual retreat together and put some sort of nice Christian or spiritual spin on what's going on. They were afraid and they were upset. They were full of fear and they were just arguing with each other and not willing to believe some of the things that they'd begun to hear. Um, it was a time of immense confusion. So... Um, and that's how many in our world are living at the moment, in real fear and real terror. Um, and the reality of death, which is out there, is just impacting people enormously. And we're seeing so many people who have lost members of the family in different parts of the world um, and not even be able to go to a funeral. There's, that's not even possible at this stage in many cases. Um, they've, many, many have lost jobs um, and they see no light at the end of the tunnel. And while we've got some lovely little encouraging videos or video clips that float around and just encourage us to all uh, to, to recognize that we will get through all this, for some the loss has been immense and a little video clip won't, won't bring that hope. They need something much deeper and much greater than just a little uh, joyful uh, jingle or something like that. Uh, so many wonder whether God even cares about this third rock from the sun, as the earth is described, this um, speck uh, in the Milky Way galaxy, uh, or this little tiny drop of dust uh, that's in the universe. Does he even care about it? Um, and many have begun to wonder about that. And others have begun to ask the deep and big questions about spiritual things. And that's what's happening in people's hearts at the moment. And so perhaps we're not unlike the first disciples on that first afternoon on the day that Jesus resurrected. They've missed it. They haven't got what's happened so far. Um, and while we're making some def desperate attempts to create online community, many of us deeply miss face-to-face -face interaction. We miss seeing kids play uh, in the playground together. We miss going to a footy match or going to a play and, and having the shared atmosphere of a body of people all in the one room or the one um, oval or the one area and just entering into that shared experience as weddings and so many things at the moment are being impacted. And an online wedding is seriously not the same as um, as, as the real deal, as all in there together and just celebrating and being in one area together. Um, but something so, so amazing had happened. It really had happened and the disciples had missed it so far. But it's going to be something when they finally get it that would forever alter their lives. And that's the point of Sunday morning. It's the point of the resurrection is it forever alters our lives. But have we got it yet? Do we know it's actually happened? Because like the disciples uh, here on this Sunday afternoon, they didn't know or they weren't sure. And they were very uncertain and very upset about the whole thing. So very early on Sunday morning, it says um, when the women were on the way to the tomb, something had already happened. Uh, two angels had come down and um, the power of the father had come upon the son and it's time for his son to come back. 
It's time for the father to bring his son back to life. And he, he brings him back to life with immense power because he fulfilled everything he was required to do to deal with sin. And so the death, death which is the last enemy, uh, is defeated as Jesus uh, is risen from the dead. And so therefore death no longer has a sting for us. Um, because of what Jesus did uh, and the fathers welcoming him back and raising him back with mighty power, as it says in the prayer in Ephesians chapter one, through the mighty power of the father. Um, and what also happened? Well, there was a violent earthquake on that morning when Jesus was resurrected. And perhaps that's the father calling to his son to come uh, out of that tomb uh, like Jesus had spoken to Lazarus. Here's the father speaking to the son. And um, the, the angels rolled back the tomb stone. Um, now, there'd been another earthquake a couple of days earlier on Good Friday. And that earthquake, it says, the graves are broken open and many holy people came out of the tombs. And, we did, and it actually says, a funny little detail there, it says those holy people, uh, after Jesus was resurrected, wandered through Jerusalem and, and showed themselves to many people. Um, and it's like... They were resurrected on Good Friday and uh, out of the tombs, a bit like that Aussie series uh, glitch or whatever it's called, uh, where they come out of the tombs. Or this is the real deal, not just um, uh, some TV series. And, and But they hung around in the tombs, it would appear, until Sunday morning. And then away they went and showed themselves to many people. So there's some pretty amazing things happening uh, in Jerusalem at this time. Now the angels came, they rolled back the stone, they sat on it. And these same angels, when they saw the women uh, coming with their spices to anoint Jesus' body, they said, why do you look for the living among the dead? And that's an amazing thing to say, uh, that Jesus is life himself. And um, he's not found amongst the dead. He's a, he is fully life and in him is life. And he says, I am the way, the truth and the life. He is life itself. So these same women rush off and then bump into Jesus, the, the living resurrected one, on the way back uh, to the town and, and they worship him. And he tells them some things to do. And they rush back but and tell the disciples, but they just can't believe it. They're just too overwhelmed. They're so broken. They're so lost. They're so timid. Uh, they're so lacking in any hope that they refuse to believe what these women tell them. And, and uh uh, though these women have no reason to lie or to make up something like that, um, they just cannot take it in at this stage. So you might be stuck in your house alone or with your family, be it a, just one or two family members, or um, perhaps you're in a share house, or perhaps um, you're in a large family. Um, and you might have lost a lot uh, and are full of bitterness or and waves of depression may be washing over you. Uh, some families are, are finding this time not so bad, but others in different parts of the world have, have lost far more than we have here in Australia, even much more. And we need to be aware of some of those great losses that have happened elsewhere. You may be feeling like nothing is about to change anytime soon. Uh, it's just going to get worse. And the reality is just like the disciples um, who had missed the biggest miracle of all, we too may be in that category of having missed the biggest miracle of all for a long time. Something did happen which more than just informs at the moment our current isolation or our current depression or our current fear. It more than informs it. It tr will transform your isolation. That's what the resurrection of Jesus does. It transforms your isolation and gives it purpose and meaning and takes it to a new level. Um, let's look at Luke 24 verse 36. Uh, it says, while the disciples were talking or debating amongst themselves, like, could it really be the case? Is this really happened? Um, and it was late on the same day that Jesus had been resurrected. They were arguing about these stories. The, the women from the tomb and then Mary Magdalene came in and said she'd seen Jesus. And a bit later on in the afternoon, um, the, the two folk on the way to Emmaus um, who had said they'd not only just seen Jesus, he'd spoken to them, spent time with them, and had even had a meal with them, and then disappeared. And, and they, we're here to tell you that that's what really happened. Uh, and they were debating about all this and, and really uncertain about it. And maybe that's where you're at. Uh, strongly debating about, is there a God? How could anyone know whether there's really a God? Does he care anyway? 
Um, you might have been like this for years. Deep down, you've wondered when you've heard people's stories that, hey, I met Jesus and uh, he changed my life and I'm so different. And you go, well, I'm not sure about all that stuff. Um, and you push those thoughts away and you cling to your bitterness or your cynicism um, or your logic um, and, and move on. And some of you might wish it was true, while others fight to prove that it couldn't be true. Um, there's no God of love that these believers talk so much about. There's no truth in it and you squash it as soon as you hear it. Um, and maybe your whole identity is wrapped up in being that person uh, who can make everyone in the room feel small and stupid for believing in a creator God who just speaks and the world comes into being and um, uh, just created a, a man and a woman, uh, a man out of the earth and a woman from the rib of the man and, uh, and all living beings, uh, living people came from them and they were perfect at the beginning and you mock that and you make people feel very little for believing it. You've convinced yourself that thinking people thinking people who trust in science uh, are standing on solid ground, whereas this Christian stuff is airy-fairy, it's flimsy, it's primitive, and doesn't take us anywhere. With this pandemic, the sense of distance from God for you might have even increased, though for many others, it's decreased, and they're deeply wondering whether there is a real God. Then something happens, and this is the amazing thing. Uh, in Luke 24, it says, Jesus entered the room and stood among them. There he is. He's alive and he's in the middle of them. And there's no doubt about it. Um, and this is what the King of Glory wants to do right now in your lounge room or your garden or wherever you're seated or, or, sta or standing at the moment. He is there. The resurrec resurrected Lord Jesus is right there in your room where you are listening right at this moment. He's present in power, but we, we just have to open up our spiritual eyes to know that that's the truth. The one you may have disregarded all your life, you've been told he's not real, and you've even hated the sound of his name, some of you, now appears to you in your isolation, and he's standing right there in power and shining with love. His eyes are filled with love for you. And listen, listen to what he says. This is the words he spoke to those disciples in their isolation, in, in their lockdown that they were under, are the same words he wants to speak to you this morning. He says, peace be with you. He brings peace. He breathes peace into a situation of incredible anxiety. And um, he's the true giver of peace. He gives what the world can never take away because it's too broken to ever give us any real peace. Jesus literally told his disciples, the peace I give you, the world can never re remove from you. It can never take it away. Right here in the middle of a scary pandemic, Jesus says these same words to all of us right in our, in our houses, or maybe you're in a, a shed out the back or wherever you are. Um, Jesus speaks these words and he restores us to the Father by his death a few days earlier on the cross. And then he's been placed in a tomb and uh, the reality of his death with the testing of the spear up in his side and blood and water get gushed out. He wasn't just, he didn't just swoon. He didn't just uh, go into a bit of a coma. He truly was dead and he, he, he died. He went into the grave, so as to speak, and he died for us. And then he resurrected so we might have new life. So we're promised an amazing future when we believe that we miss the event that makes all the difference. We missed it. And uh, it did happen, like the disciples were sitting there in isolation after the resurrection. It happened and they missed it. And then Jesus appears and shows them who he is and um, reveals the reality of what happened hours earlier. And for us, maybe it's decades later, 2,000 years and a few decades later, um, whereby we... Uh, have missed the reality of the power of his resurrection. But right now he appears to you. He says, peace be with you. And he is alive means we can be truly alive for the first time. And we just want to worship the King of Kings and be like Thomas when he finally saw Jesus, even though the others had all believed. Uh, he said, unless I believe, unless I see, uh, I cannot believe. And Jesus appeared to him and he wants to appear to you now and just show you the reality of who he is, believe uh, with your, the eyes of faith 
uh, Thomas said, uh, Jesus said to Thomas, it's great that you believe, but how much more blessed is the person who believes without having seen because they know in their heart that Jesus has risen from the dead and uh, stands there in all his glory and power to deliver us from our sin and from hell and, and give us a, a, a place in the Father's house, which we call heaven. And uh, gl glory waits us when we die and life is now uh, full and complete when we're here on earth as we learn to trust in him. So let's pray together. Mighty God, thank you for the power that came into your son to raise him from the dead. And we thank you, our God, that you give us life through your son. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that is poured into us to show us day by day the power of the resurrection in our lives. And we worship you now and we just give ourselves to you and thank you that you gave yourself fully to us. And we believe you and love you and we respond to you and we reach out to you now and we say, yes, you are real and we acknowledge the reality of who you are and we just surrender our lives to you now in Jesus mighty name. Amen.